Taking your calls today for Dr. Zorba Pastor. The number to call is 270-9933, and we have three lines open. If you have a question today, Dr. Pastor joins us from his clinic in Oregon. Hi, Zorba. Hi, good to see you guys. Good to see you as well. And while we're waiting for some of the calls to screen, there is a new study in the Journal of the American Medical Association about dementia risk. What is that about? Right. Well, it's on dementia risk and something called cognitive reserve. So it's a very interesting study. It comes out of Rush Medical School in Chicago. 2,000 people started the study back about 12 years ago. And they looked to see what were the risk factors, what were things that were more likely to make you have dementia. Half of all uh, dementia is from Alzheimer's, and half of the other half of dementia is from cardiovascular disease, stroke, and so on. And they wanted to see what those risks were. Everyone in the study said, well, when they die, when they perish, they would have their brains autopsy. What they found was that people who had something called cognitive reserve, if they went to the library when they were younger, if they read books, if they had education beyond high school, if as adults, as seniors, they had social interaction, which is very important for a cognitive reserve, give and go with conversation, that those people were less likely to have Alzheimer's and dementia. But that wasn't the most interesting part of the study. The most interesting part of the study was when they autopsied a number of people who had, like I said, had cognitive reserve, they read, they thought, they played with, you know, they talked with one another, they did things together. Some of those people who showed no signs of Alzheimer's and dementia actually had a brain that had the plaques and tangles of Alzheimer's disease. So in other words, pathologically, when you looked at their brain, it showed they had Alzheimer's, but in fact, they didn't show any manifestation of that. Why? Because they had cognitive reserve because they kept on learning. And that's very important. Now, the important thing about this is this. For senior citizens, learning means interacting with other people. It's very clear that learning means going out to dinner with friends, talking to people on the telephone, meeting with people. That's important for senior citizens, and that's part of what we call senior citizen cognitive reserve that keeps your brain functioning, and that's the good news. We are social human beings. Yeah, very interesting. We are social, yes. All right, let's get to the phones. Let's start with Jeannie and Prairie du Sac. Hi, what's your question? Hi. Hi, Dr. Zorba. By the way, I have respected you so many times. I watch you oh, as much you. as I can. And by the way, Mark Keene and thank Susan you. Simon are my best um, um, news news people. Um, yes, I have a question. I've been, um, I talked to you before about this. I've been diagnosed with severe neuropathy. And um, uh they put me on gabapitin for a while, four months, mm -hmm. and I just gained weight, and it just was not helping with my pain at all. Um, what? And now I'm not. I'm on uh, nothing now except for Tylenol, and it doesn't do any good. What can I do at right. home here to help relieve some of the tingling and pain in the bottom of my feet? Sure. Well, first of all, you tried gabapentin and gained weight with it. There are other drugs in that class, Lyrica being one of them, Tegretol being another one, anti-seizure drugs that can be very, very useful. The other thing I would consider trying would be an antidepressant called Doxypin, because Doxypin is a drug that we find is very good for neuropathic pain, or something called a tricyclic antidepressant like nortriptyline. So there are other drugs that you can talk to your doctor about that may help. The other thing that some sometimes helps uh, at home is something called contrast baths. Contrast baths are where you have two buckets of water. One bucket has warm water, the other bucket has cold water from the sink with lots of ice cubes. And you put your feet in warm water for maybe two to three minutes until it gets nice and warm, and then you put it in the ice cold bucket. And then you put it in warm water and in the bucket, and you go back and forth three or four or five times. And sometimes the heat and the cold will actually shut off those neurons that are in your feet and may actually give you some comfort, and it's a non-drug way that may help with your neuropathic pain. I would oh, try that. Very yeah, it doesn't hurt to try it. And Jeannie, thank you for the nice compliment yes, very as nice. well. That was thank very you. nice. Thank you very much. Let's go to Corey in McFarland. Hi, Corey. What's your question? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I'm just recovering from a broken fibula. I have a, a knee that needs replacing. I've had both knees uh, reconstructive surgery on them, and um, I'm wondering... I was told that because of the multiple surgeries that um, there's a likelihood of infections. At first, I wondered if that's really, how do you really know if somebody's getting an infection based on earlier, you know, surgeries and so forth? And does it make, the, does it make sense to do both knees at the same time as some have done or one 
Or here's the other one. Well, if I... Uh, if I if I had uh, multiple surgeries, I would probably do one knee at a time. I think that's the safer way to go. I wouldn't do two knees at one time. If you've had both knees reconstructed, the recovery is more difficult. And if you've had previous surgeries, it's going to be super, superly more difficult. So I would do one knee at a time. But I don't think having multiple surgeries necessarily puts you at a much higher risk. It may be a higher risk of the surgery because you've got scar tissue. But a good surgeon, good hospital, good pre-op care, Care, good post-op care, I don't think the incidence of infection is going to be significantly higher. I think it's a matter of paying attention, doing all the right things before the surgery to keep your skin nice and healthy prior to the surgery. But I would not have both knees done at the same time. I'm a one knee person. <laughs> do one knee, get it fixed, do the next knee. Yeah, I think I agree that the recovery of that would be horrendous. All right, we're out of time. Yeah. Thank you all for calling in. Zorba, thank you for your time. Thank you, Zorba. Good Thanks. to see you. My pleasure. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast.